One of the things that makes Flipside unique, in my opinion, is that for the first time, it's not asking people to figure out what form of feminism fits them. Among my generation, there is a, or just the conservative women movement that's going on today, so many of those women want to grab a hold of some aspect of feminism and say, I'm a conservative feminist, or let's go forward and figure out how to make feminism work for today's woman. But the reality is, we're coming along to say, you don't need feminism at all. You don't need to hold on to that banner and figure out what form that will fit for your political beliefs. Because what you think feminism is, what you've been taught that it is, which is equal rights for women, is not at all what feminism is. Feminism is something else entirely, and that's the point of flip side. So once you know that, it becomes very easy to just chuck the label. Flipside is essentially a response to the report that came out in 2007 by the National Bureau of Economic Research, which showed that women's happiness has declined over the past 35 years. And I remember when that report came out and the you know, number one magazines were asking questions like, did feminism make women miserable? And I'm thinking, yes! But that's not what came out in the magazine, of course. They always have um, feminists to respond to that question, and of course you know what they're going to say. But this book, Flipside, is really an answer to that question. Did feminism make women miserable? And our argument is that, yes, feminism has sabotaged women's happiness. Our new book, The Flip Side of Feminism, exposes the lies about feminism and puts young women on guard so they will not be destroyed by feminist myths. Uh, feminism teaches women that they are victims of the patriarchy. This is so unfortunate. It's a recipe for being unhappy. Uh, Betty Friedan uh, said that the home was a comfortable concentration camp. And Gloria Steinem said, when you get married, you become a semi-non person. Uh, the feminists were against marriage. Uh, they invited women to be independent, uh, to go out and have a career, and to avoid marriage. And that is just simply so unfortunate. The Flip Side of Feminism is a good book for both men and women, for mothers and fathers. It tells what conservative women already know, but most men don't dare to say. And the reason is because it shows how the feminist movement has attacked men, how it's been disdainful, not only of full-time homemakers, but also of fathers. Uh, it is a very good book to give to your, the young people in your family so they will not be misled by the media or by academia or by the women's studies courses in colleges and universities. One of the things that concerns me so much about the entire feminist movement and how it pertains to today's conservative movement, particularly with all the new women, the crop of new women that we're seeing, is that people feel that in order to prove that you're a strong, independent, or even liberated woman, you have to hold on to that feminist label because that's what feminism means. In flip side, we specifically state and prove, we think, that you can be those things. You can be strong and powerful and independent and still not be a feminist. Feminists frequently ask me, uh, am I not grateful for all the opportunities that feminism has created for me? Uh, that's ridiculous because I made my way long before the feminist movement got started. Uh, I worked my way through a great university, Washington University in St. Louis, got my degree in 1944. I worked my way through as a gunner on the night shift, firing 30 and 50 caliber ammunition to test the ammunition before it was accepted by the government. I didn't need the feminists to get me that job. And actually, my mother got her college degree in 1920. Those opportunities were always out there for women if they wanted them. In previous generations, the majority of women just thought uh, building a family and being the mothers and homemakers uh, was more 
more important. And then I published my first book, A Choice Not an Echo, in 1964 and uh, sold three million copies right out of my garage. I didn't need the feminists to do that. So they didn't create any opportunities for me. Those opportunities are always there for American women who are the most fortunate people who ever lived on this earth. My hope with Flipside is that people, um, particularly people who know very strongly about how they feel about this issue, but feel that they cannot say anything out loud to anybody because if they say anything against feminism they're immediately branded a chauvinist or a throwback to the 1950s. I want them to see that what they think and what they feel is actually right on and there is nothing out there for them except for this book to uh, support them. Flipside is essentially asking people to rethink the way they've been taught to think and that is a very tall order but we can begin to sort of open the doors to another way of looking at this issue for the first time in Flipside.